Hey guys, this video is about KA, KB, PKA, and PKB, and more specifically how to convert between them. It's pretty easy, basically it's a you know the one of them, you know them all kind of deal. So the best way to do this is going to be by an example. So for example, carbonic acid has a KA of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7. So okay, so how do we find out KB? Well, we can figure that out directly by going... Oh, that's horrible. So we know KB is equal to KW over top of KA. And we know KW and we know KA. KW is always 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. And our Ka in this case, this happens to be 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7. So it's a pretty simple calculation to get the Kb, which comes out to, let's see, 2.38. times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so now let's go back and try to figure out the pKa here. <clears throat> so okay, we know Ka is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7, so that means pKa is going to be the negative logarithm of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7. This is a bracket. Negative 7, which in this case equals 6.337, or 377 rather. <clears throat> okay, so then how do we figure out PKB from this? Well, we can do two different ways. So we know that um, we know KB is 2.38 times 10 to the negative 8. So then PKB has to be uh, the negative logarithm of that. So yeah, the PKBs work just like the pH, where it takes a negative logarithm of H, or the hydrogen concentration, and you get the pH. Basically, take the negative logarithm of Kb or Ka and get the pKb or pKa, whichever one you're doing. And okay, so in this case, this is going to equal to let's see, seven point six two three Okay, and there's yet another way we can do this. Um, so we know pKa, and we want to figure out pKb. We're not going to worry about this. But there's something super awesome where you have pKa plus pKb equals to 14. So another way we could have done this basically go 14 minus this, so 6.377 to get our pKb. Oh, this is horribly messy. Which would come out to be exactly the 7.623 again. So that's not too bad. And I guess we're done.